Hey there, and welcome back to Utility Sports. We have a fun video today. We have a 2021 MLB mock draft. This is our latest rendition. So if you are interested in some baseball content, this is the place to subscribe. I'll give you a second right now to go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We do produce a lot of baseball content. Now with the first overall pick, this is much anticipated, but Marcelo Mayer is going to be the pick for the Pirates. I think you are getting a cornerstone, shor cornerstone shortstop uh, for this lineup for a long time. He's definitely a guy that has the physical traits and the bat speed to be that three or four hitter for them potentially in the future. But the big thing for them, obviously, you want to make sure he can stay at that shortstop position. I think he will be able to from what we've seen uh, for him as a fielder. I love this pick for the Pirates. They're going ahead and taking a chance on a prep bat. But for me personally, I'd like to move a lot. At number two, I think we have the Texas Rangers going with Jack Leiter. This pick definitely makes some sense to me. Why do you say that? Well, for the Texas Rangers, if we look at organizational depth, I think obviously they are lacking starting pitching a little bit. They do have some nice hitters coming up through the minor league system, but on the starting pitching aspect, they definitely need some help here. Jack Leiter's got one of the best curveballs in the entire draft, if not the best. A very, very interesting prospect going forward from Vanderbilt. He's one of those consistent, solid arms. He will be their number one in the future if they do draft him with the second overall pick. Definitely a guy that you can you know, slot ahead of Dean Dunning and some other guys that are on their way up for the Texas Rangers. At number three, we have the Detroit Tigers. Jordan Lawler is the pick from Dallas J. Suit High School. Well, once again, another prep bat going off the board. Detroit's done a really nice job with their starting pitching as a whole, kind of rounding that out, you know, getting that ready um, uh, with this rebuild. I think the, the hitters are lacking behind just a little bit. They need a little more. Uh, Jordan Lawler's a, a physical specimen in terms of what he has for physical traits. He can be that true five-tool player. I know that's thrown out a lot, but I definitely think he has the ability to do so. Detroit's getting a really nice player here at number three. Um, you know, you could see the Texas Rangers potentially look at taking Lawler at two, but I think they have to focus more starting pitching. And then Detroit's lucky that way that they are able to land Jordan Lawler. At number four, this has been consistent for me now for two straight mock drafts. I have Henry Davis from Louisville. This is one of the best hitting prospects, period. Not just hitting, you know, catching prospects from the draft, but I'm talking overall hitting prospects. Definitely a guy that can hit for some average at the next level. He will likely be a, a 300 hitter at the major league level. I see that to, or 290. That's kind of the range I, I see him uh, at the major league level. Boston definitely needs to look at that catching position. I think this is a really, really good fit for them. And this team is really starting to build something nice in that AL East. They, they have to compete with the Yankees and the Rays and the Blue Jays. So they got to be ahead of things here. I, I love that for Boston, they have a really good foundation and they can truly build on it with a Henry Davis selection. At number five, we have the Baltimore Orioles. I have them going with a dynamic uh, prep bat here in uh, Khalil Watson from Wake Forest High School. This is definitely a guy that's got the, he's got the speed. Really, really interesting prospect for me. I think for Baltimore, they're once again, looking to build on obviously what they have. They have Adley Rushman coming. Uh, obviously uh, Mullins has broke out in a huge way this year. So the Orioles are looking in pretty good shape. I think you can kind of add on to that by taking a guy like Khalil Watson. Uh, a reason for that is you need some more dynamic players in the field. I think Khalil Watson brings that for them. Now at number six, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks. Colton Kowser from Sam Houston State. Good 6'3 frame, consistent bat. This is definitely a guy that's going to be able to help them long term. I think the Diamondbacks are looking to definitely sell at the deadline. They are going to get rid of some of their outfielders and just you know better hitters in general. Colton Kowser will be a guy that will be ready pretty soon. I believe he's kind of getting close to, to that major league level. You know, Once he steps in, it's not going to take him long in the minors to kind of adjust. I only see this being, you know, a two-year project potentially for him. And then I, I see him potentially making it to the majors. Definitely an advanced bat for the Diamondbacks. At number seven here, we have Jackson Job, And this is a little bit of a change from our last mock draft, but Jackson Job is turning some heads. Definitely has the heater. Um, he, he's one of the, the higher upside prospects in the class. I think Kansas City, once again, is going to look to build off of that starting pitching. They have some nice pieces in place in the minor league system, but I think they need to take a chance on a, a prep pitcher like Jackson Job. I, I think this is a wonderful pairing for, for both parties. Definitely think the Royals are, are winners here. Uh, some people might think this is a little bit of a reach. I don't think so. I think this is kind of the range we're going to see Jackson Job when it comes to dra actual draft night. 
At number eight, we have the Colorado Rockies. Obviously, they have to figure out um, what is their plan of action. I think Trevor Story likely will be traded. I'm not sure, you know, what what is the plan of action for the Colorado Rockies? Obviously, you don't have Nolan Arenado anymore. You're going to basically be seeing another rebuild for this team, unfortunately. Um, it was just really tough how they weren't able to win, obviously, with Story and Arenado. But Brady House is the pick out of Winterboro High School. I think this is a good selection for them. Once again, you're taking a chance on a prep bat, but at the same time, you have to have some hitters ready to go. Uh, he has some interesting interesting upside as a prospect, but I love this pick for the Colorado Rockies. Now the next selection, this is kind of interesting because uh, Kumar Rocker was definitely a guy at the start of the year was thought to be the number one overall pick. That was kind of the consensus across the board hard throwing righty, definitely a guy that has some powerful stuff. Um, I, I think the angels definitely just need to continue uh, improving their pitching. They have not had good pitching throughout Mike Trout's entire career as a whole. I, I, they've had good pitchers, individual pitchers, some, but I think as a whole, they are lacking the pitching department. I think they'd feel very happy for Kumar Rocker to fall here at number nine. I, I don't see Rocker dropping out of the top 10 with some of those physical traits. He struggled with some command. He's had some issues. There's no denying that, but the, the talent is there for sure. There's a reason he was thought to be the number one overall pick at one point in time. He falls a little bit. I think uh, obviously the angels are going to get their hands on him, work on a couple of things, and he could be a dynamic pitcher at the next level. Now at number 10, we have the New York Mets. I have them taking Sal Fralick. This is a guy that's, you know, he, he's, he's a bat to ball kind of guy. He, he gets a lot of contact. Uh, definitely not a, not a guy that's going to strike out a ton at the next level, but he is very, very bat to ball oriented. He makes good contact. Um, he's got a smaller frame, but that's okay. New York Mets doing a really nice job here, getting some more outfield depth. I'm kind of interested to see how they shake up things in the outfield moving forward. I think Sal Freilich fits in very nicely with this team. Now at 11, we have Sam Bachman from the University of Miami, Ohio. Uh, a, a guy that's thought to be a potential top 10 pick. Um, one of one of uh, one of those other power arms in the class. I think Washington's doing a really nice job establishing pitching. Max Scherzer realistically won't be there forever. Um, Steven Strasburg always has injuries, so you know they have the lineup. They have some of the hitters in place to keep competing, but at the same time, they they have to have some pitching plans ready to go as some of those guys in the rotation age. Now we have the Seattle Mariners here at number twelve. Jordan Wicks is the pick the best left-handed pitcher in the entire class from Kansas state interesting arm does a really nice job mixing up his pitches, hitting, hitting his spots in the zone, Seattle. Once again, they have some of those hitting prospects in place. They wanted to continue um, building that rotation for the future. I think definitely Jordan Wicks can be a part of it for this team. Now at number 13, we have the Philadelphia Phillies. Ty Madden is going to be the pick. The Phillies as a whole are looking to continue to build the rotation. This is kind of like this range where um, I, I think these teams need some back-end arms. I think Ty Madden can be a three at the next level. Um, definitely a guy that can light up the radar gun as well. Uh, he's had a kind of a transformation to his body. He's lost about 30 pounds over the past year. Um, kind of an interesting player. I, I think ultimately the Phillies are looking to just develop their pitching a little further. Um, I, I like this pick. Now at number 14, we have the San Francisco Giants. Ryan Cusick is the pick out of Wake Forest. They're looking for an established college arm at the selection. San Francisco Giants have done a really nice job this year. They have surprised everyone. I think Cusick slides in very nicely into that back half of that rotation, anywhere from that three to the five range. But you know he's never going to be a guy that, that's an absolute star, but you don't need him to be. For the San Francisco Giants, they have some nice pieces in place. I think they are going to look to develop the pitching a little further. At number 15 now, we have Bubba Chandler from North Orany High School. Uh, we don't know exactly what Bubba Chandler's plan is moving through the minor league system. I think the Brewers are just going to kind of take a chance. He's got two-way potential, but I think realistically he will stick with one position, um, whether it's the pitcher or shortstop. He's a good enough athlete to be both. But for the Brewers, they're just looking for a little bit of versatility in that minor league system. Obviously, you can do a lot of different things with Bubba Chandler. Love the pick here for them. Now at number 16, we have the Miami Marlins. Matt McClain is the pick from UCLA. Once Matt McClain got in, onto campus at UCLA, he had some inconsistencies. But overall, I, I think he's really cleaned up his game nicely. The Miami Marlins are going to be looking for a plan of attack in their minor league system. 
looking for some more middle infield depth. I think this gives that to them. Um, you, you don't know what's going to happen with Miguel Rojas. It's very possible that he is traded along with like Starling Marte. But, you know, for the Miami Marlins, they're looking for that up the middle help. Uh, minor league system as a whole has some interesting prospects, but I think they'd feel a little more comfortable had they drafted one in the first round at 16. Now at 17, we have the Cincinnati Reds. Adrian Del Castillo from the University of Miami. The Reds ultimately could be looking to upgrade over Tucker Barnhart long term. I think Del Castillo could be an, an advanced hitter enough for the Reds to feel comfortable bringing him up uh, sooner rather than later. I, I think ultimately, uh, if they want to keep upgrading this offense, that's the way to do it. Del Castillo from Miami. Now at number 18, we have the St. Louis Cardinals. We got a, another hard throwing right handed prep arm, Chase Petty from Mainland Regional High School. For the Cardinals, they do a wonderful job. Establish, or they do a wonderful job with the, their starting pitchers that they do have. They do a great job as a whole developing talent from their own farm system. I think Chase Petty would be a wonderful fit for them. He has a lot of those physical traits that they would really like in a starting pitcher. He throws really hard. Um, definitely a guy that can pick his spots in the zone, attacks consistently, and he's not afraid of any batter at, at this point. So I like this pick for the Cardinals. Now our next selection, we have number 19, Will Bedner. He actually moves up from the Tampa Bay Rays pick all the way to 19 here. Um, I think a big part of this is his impact on the College World Series. Definitely showed that he could pitch at an effective level um, at the MLB. So I, I think Will Bedner offers an interesting mix of pitches. Uh, the Mississippi State product obviously is a big part of their run. Uh, I think the Toronto Blue Jays would be very, very hard for us to not take him at number 19. At number 20, we have Harry Ford, the catcher from North Cobb High School. The New York Yankees have a lot of issues fundamentally. I'm not sure what Gary Sanchez's future is going to look like with this team, but I could very, very well see them taking a chance on a prep bat in Harry Ford. It's possible that he does go a little bit higher, but for the New York Yankees, it's about looking in the mirror and deciding, you know, what is the, you know, the plan of action. It could be moving on without Gary Sanchez, but I guess we will see. At 21, we have Andrew Painter from Cavalry Christian High School. This is a guy that's very, very interesting prospect for the Cubs. The Cubs are right in the thick of it. I think they can improve from their, their farm system standpoint, uh, getting more starting pitcher, especially a right-handed arm that could be a consistent back half rotation guy for them. Uh, for the Chicago Cubs, they're really close right now. Kind of interested to see what they do at the trade deadline, but I think they're going to be focusing on when draft time comes, for the starting pitching. At 22, we have the Chicago White Sox. I have a shortstop, um, also right-handed pitcher, Spencer Schwellenbach from Nebraska. The Chicago White Sox are in an interesting position. Um, they traded Dane Dunning away in exchange for Lance Lynn. That kind of hurt their minor league depth at, at the right-handed pitch or at the pitching spot. So I think they're going to go ahead and try to replenish that. They also have a, another guy that could have some two-way potential, but I think more or less, he will stick at one of his positions of choice. Kind of interested to see what route the Chicago White Sox want to take him. Now we move on to 23. We have the Cleveland Indians. Benny Montgomery is going to be the pick. I've talked about them potentially getting Benny Montgomery before. I think this is still the pick for them. Reason being, they need some more hitters in that lineup. They do a wonderful job developing pitching. At the same time, they need to make sure that their hitting can keep up with their pitching. That's been kind of the problem for the Indians. Um, you know, through, through the last, I don't know, six years or so, they just haven't had just enough hitting. Obviously it hurts not having guys like Francisco Lindor in the lineup, but I think Benny Montgomery has a potential to be a nice bat at the major league level. Next pick 24 will Taylor from Dutch fork high school. A lot of prep bats are coming off the board. This is going to be kind of an interesting year. We've, we haven't had, you know, obviously the 2020 season was cut short. Uh, they, nobody really got to play baseball period at any level. Uh, so it, it's a lot of guessing at this point. Will Taylor, I think, established himself as, you know, one of the better prep outfielders in this class. Atlanta getting some versatility in that outfield with taking a guy like Will Taylor. Kind of curious to see the route that they want to take. Maybe they, they look even more pitching. Maybe they look, you know, potentially middle of the infield. I, I think this could be an interesting pick for them. 
At 25, we have the Oakland Athletics. I have Ethan Wilson going from South Alabama. Uh, this is definitely a guy that can hit to all fields. Uh, he, he offers an interesting bat, uh, established college bat. So kind of interesting for the Athletics, depending on what they do kind of at the deadline. I think they will be looking for an outfielding prospect. Um, overall, in, this, in the farm system, I think that's probably where they need to address um, for sure. So at 25, I have Ethan Wilson, who once again established college bat that they definitely could use. At 26, we have the Minnesota Twins. They've struggled mightily with starting pitching this season. There's no, no mistake about it. Uh, you look at the minor league system, they, they definitely need some more starters. I think at the deadline, they will be active in trying to acquire some prospects, uh, some right-handed and left-handed arms. Um, obviously in exchange for some veterans. Gavin Williams uh, is a prospect. He's been kind of a higher riser lately, finally found his way into the first round. The Minnesota Twins have to make sure that they get an established college arm or any arm in general in this first round. Otherwise, it's going to be really tough sledding for them. At 27, Gunnar Hoagland, uh, definitely a guy that could have been in that top 20 range, maybe even higher top 15 but that injury definitely hurt him. I, I think that there is going to be a team that takes a chance on him. I think the San Diego Padres, obviously they have not been super concerned about, you know, there, there's been injuries to their staff, but I think they're going to take a chance. They want to make sure that they just get the best talent in the building. So hopefully for, for Hoagland's sake, he doesn't fall that far, but for the San Diego Padres, this is a huge pickup. At 28, we have the Tampa Bay Rays. Historically, they do love to take starting pitching. They love to develop it. Michael McGreevy from UC Santa Barbara is going to be the pick. The Rays definitely have some versatility in what they want to do. I think they very well could be flipping some of their minor league pitching prospects for some hitting. So therefore, opening up the door for Tampa Bay, once again, to take a right-handed pitcher. I think this makes all the sense in the world for the, the Rays to go ahead and do so. They do a really great job developing. And I think Michael McGreevy wouldn't, wouldn't be the exception to that. Once again, at 29, I have Jaden Hill. I, I mocked this last time for a reason. This is a guy you want to take a flyer on. He had some inconsistencies at LSU, um, saw some bullpen work. So there's a lot of unknowns about Jaden Hill, but the, the talent is undeniable. Could be a mid-round pick potentially had he not struggled so much as a whole. But the Dodgers, they are not afraid to take chances. And that's who they are going with at 29. I want to thank you again for watching this video. It really means the world to us that you do watch our content. Please leave a like and also subscribe if you are new to the channel. We love producing content for you and we can't wait to see you guys in our next video.